Hey guys and welcome back to Flatpak Effects and thank you to Zyro for sponsoring this video. If you want to create a stunning website in minutes, you can check them out via the link in the description below. Now the particular clips that I'm using are licensed, so I can't share them with you. Now the first shot you're going to need is a macro shot of an eye. Now you can either shoot this yourself or there's lots of stock video sites out there that have clips of close-ups of people's eye. The next shot here is just a random shot I've got here of a fire burning. Now this is for the middle part through the transition and also for the reflection. So this again can be whatever you like. It doesn't have to be this exact shot of a fire. It can just be a close-up, it can be a wider shot. You can rescale it to make it work. Now for this shot, you're going to need embers that are on a black background. So if you're filming this yourself, you'll need to stop right down on your camera so the background goes nice and black, and then you're just filming the embers. Now we need the black background because we use that as a screen to basically remove and overlay that over the top. And the last shot I have here is just my final shot or the shot that you're going to transition into. For me, it's just a wide shot here of this campfire. But again, this can be whatever you like. It doesn't have to be this shot. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab my fire shot and create a new composition here. Then I'm going to grab my eye shot and drag that over the top. Now I may have to reposition my eye here so it lines up here in the center. I've also found a part here where the eye closes and then opens. So I like that part. So I'm just going to drag in here and use that as the beginning of my shot. I'm also going to grab this fire clip and drag that above. And what we can do is I can basically come over to the toggle modes here and under modes, I want to just change this to be the color dodge. Now the blending mode that you use for your clips may be different, but all I recommend doing is just going through and trying all the different options until you get the look that you're kind of going for. So now I can just basically reposition this and get it into a position where I'm kind of happy, where I want the reflection to be. You can see here we got a problem because it's not actually tracked to that clip. So we need to track the eye so that we can create some position data. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a null object here. We're gonna use this as the tracker. And with my eye selected, I'm gonna come up to animation and down to track motion. Now what I'm going to do here is make sure that rotation and scale are also selected. And I'm going to reposition this down here to the lower part of the eye. I'm gonna scale these boxes up here and move this one over here. Now I can just hit play forward. And I'm just watching those trackers to make sure that they're not slipping while it's tracking. If they are slipping, then I need to stop. I need to reposition them and then start again. And then I'm going to come back to the start here. I'm going to track backwards because we just need it to where the eye closes. So it just loses the track there, but that's fine. Now I can edit the target. I can select that tracker that we just created. And then I'm going to apply that information to that. Now I can just hide all these. And then I want to take my fire layer and just parent it to that tracker. And now our fire is now tracked onto that eye. So now I can just do any final readjustment here. Next, what I want to do is create a mask because we can see we've got fire on the outside of the eye and we want it to only appear in the middle. Now, what's the point of pouring your creative heart and soul into the latest video and then not sharing it with the world? Well, the most effective way to share content with your fellow creators is to have a website that best showcases your work. As someone who has built my entire business around having a strong branded website, I can tell you just how important this is. So when Zyro said they have the easiest way to create a website or online store, I had to try them out. I have to admit, I was actually really impressed because it did exactly what they said it would do and it allowed me to create a mock-up of my own website in about 15 minutes. And that is honestly no exaggeration from never using Xyro before. I was able to design a website that showcased my brand by simply choosing one of the hundreds of designer made templates and customizing it to fit my needs. Now, I personally really like how simple the drag and drop editor is to use. It feels really intuitive to simply reposition images and text. I can also add YouTube videos directly to the website 
all with no coding skills required. I have used other website builders in the past and in my experience, I've found them to be quite slow. So I was quite surprised to see just how extremely far Zyro loaded when building and previewing my website. Zyro is also the most affordable option I've seen in the market. With Zyro's limited time deal, you too can create a stunning website in minutes, starting from just $2.61 a month. With a 30 day money back guarantee and 24 seven support, use the special coupon code FLATPACKEFFECTS to get an additional 10% off yearly plans plus a free domain for a year. And from June 1st, when clicking the link or using the code FLATPACKEFFECTS, you'll get three extra months free with any yearly plan. And the best part is this limited time deal applies on top of your regular discount. You can check it all out via the link in the description below. I'm gonna duplicate that bottom layer and drag it above on top. I don't wanna reposition it. I just need it to be exactly where it was. And then I can just simply come up here and start drawing a rough mask that runs around the outside of this eye. I'm gonna come down to the mask settings here and I can even come across here and just start motion tracking this mask. So that's gonna track that mask onto that position. I'm gonna go back to the start here and do the same. Now where the eye starts to close, I'm going to basically manually keyframe this because I know the mask is not going to stay tracked well there. So I need to select that mask again. I'm just gonna click on the screen here so I can individually control these. And then I'm just repositioning this layer. So something like that. So I'm just making sure that it kind of follows that eye right down to where it closes. Now where that layer starts, I want to basically get rid of that fire so that it disappears. Now at the moment, it's only masked to only show what's on the outside. So we need to basically come up here and we can either just hit invert or we can subtract that. And that's gonna create a nice little mask there. Another thing we can do is also add a little bit of a feather, maybe something like that. And I can also add a little bit of expansion if you need to control the edge of that mask. So I'm just trying to get it to where it kind of sits right. The other thing I want to do is add a little bit of correction here. So I'm gonna start with my bottom eye layer. And remember, this is just going to be the inside of the eye. So I'm just gonna come up to effect down to color correction and I just want to add some of the curves. And I'm just going to bring this slightly up like this and that's just going to help add a little bit of contrast darken that down a little bit like this i'm going to copy that and i need to make sure that my top layer also has that same effect applied so it applies it to the outside i can always go back through and readjust these and then i also want to apply that to my fire layer so with the fire layer, I can now have control over that individual fire. If you look close at the eye, you can see we're getting a lot of that sort of the highlights that are reflecting. So I really wanna try and emphasize those highlights more and bring the shadows down. And then what I can do is I can come down here and I just want to adjust the overall opacity. So I'm just gonna drag this right down because I want it to be a little bit see-through, maybe around sort of 50%, something like that. The other thing I want to do here with the fire layer is I only want to affect the eyeball itself. So what I can do is create a mask which kind of runs around the eyeball and add a bit of a feather on that. Maybe drag down on this expansion slightly. So that's kind of just staying in the middle of the eye there. Can maybe just readjust this slightly. So you can mess around with that until you kind of get the look that you're happy with. And the other thing I want to do is you can see that the reflections, this is quite sharp and the eyeball is everything's kind of blurred. So I want to add a bit of a blur effect to this fire layer. Now what I did was I came up to effect down to blur and sharpen and I added the camera lens blur and I dragged this down to about two. So you don't need much here. It's just to kind of take off that edge. It just helps it kind of sit into our shot a little bit better. Now as we're doing that zoom, we're gonna then readjust that. But at the moment that's looking good. Next, I think we're ready to actually start adding that zoom and then we can position those other layers over the top. So I'm gonna come back here and make these all 3D and I'm going to add a camera. Now the camera can be 35 millimeters, that's fine. 
And with the camera layer, I want to kind of start the transition maybe somewhere around here. And I'm gonna create a point of interest and a position keyframe here. And about at the end of this clip, I'm going to grab my camera tool by hitting C on the keyboard and I'm going to zoom and then reposition this into the dark part here of the eye. So it kind of zooms. So if I play through that, you can see it's zooming into that eye. Now I'm ready to kind of add some effects over the top. With those layers, I'm also just going to make them both easy ease. And I wanna come across to the graph editor and I want to drag both of these in so we kind of create a, a, an easy ease movement. So it's kind of slow at the start and then it kind of goes faster as it's zooming in, right? So we kind of get that ramp to the zoom effect. Over the top here, I'm ready to start adding some of those other layers. So one of the layers I'm going to add is this ember shot. What I'm going to do is change this blending mode here to screen. Because the background is black, when I change it to screen, it's gonna remove that and we're just gonna end up with those embers basically in the foreground. But what I'm going to do with the embers layer, you can see as the camera's zooming through, the embers disappear. I don't want it to follow that camera. So what I'm gonna do is turn off that 3D layer and now the embers will stay on screen all the way through that transition. So as it's zooming in, the embers are basically burning there in the foreground. I'm gonna hit S on the keyboard and create a scale keyframe there at the start. And then I'm going to zoom this in a little bit because I want it to kind of transition in or zoom in with the effect as we're zooming through. I'm also gonna hit T, create an opacity keyframe here, and I want to create another one here and create basically a fade on effect. I can move these back. So as it's starting to transition through, those embers are starting to fade on. So we get that nice little effect like that as the camera's zooming through. And the other thing is I wanna add a bit of that sort of that camera a blur, which we did on our original fire layer. If I come up to the effect, I can also copy that camera blur and paste it onto that layer. And I wanna create a keyframe so that we're animating it. So it starts blurry and then kind of transitions basically sharp in the middle and then transitions blurry at the end. So I'm gonna hit U on the keyboard to bring up those keyframes. So I want it blurry here at the start. In the middle here, I want it to basically become sharp again. So I'm gonna create, drag this down to zero. I want it to stay at that position for a little while. And then at the end, I want it to kind of go blurry again. So I'm gonna drag up. So we kind of create this ramping on effect as the camera is zooming through. Also that fire is coming through in the background so we can get rid of that now by just splitting that layer and then deleting that end part. So we just end up with the darkness there. I can make all of these easy ease just to help soften out that animation. And the fire as well, we can also animate. So I want it to start kind of blurry here I'm gonna create a keyframe there for the blur radius. And as it's zooming in, I want it to become sharper again. So I drag this down to zero. And then as it transitions through like that. Now we're ready to add that final shot in. So I can add my campfire scene here at the end. So I'm gonna drag that up so it lines up nicely there. And I also want to make that 3D and we'll have to probably scale that right down to make it fit into the background there. So maybe reposition this to something like that. I'm just gonna drag this back very slightly here. So it's kind of coming in from the background as it fades in like this. The other thing I can do is also turn on motion blur for all of these layers, and that's just gonna add motion blur as the camera zooming through, it's just gonna help soften out that overall transition. Now, depending on how dark your background is there, if you're getting that box effect happening here where you can see the edge, if the camera blur is not covering that, then you can add a motion tile over the top and then just scale this right up and mirror the edges and that'll just help sort of hide that background effect. The other thing that I added over the top 
was I added another fire layer over the top just to kind of hide that middle part or that transition. So what I did was I came up to the fire layer, I just dragged another one here on top. And what I did with this one is I made sure that this was set to screen. That's going to remove that layer. And then I could scale this right up. So I wanted it to basically kind of just be the fire that we're kind of looking through here. I also just came down here to this layer and grabbed the curves from my original fire layer, added the curves here over the top. And what I did with this one was I added a bit of a scale over the top so that the fire sort of like scaled through like this. And I also added a bit of a opacity keyframe here. So it kind of transitions in. You can also drag this down a little bit here just to kind of hide those edges. And I just dragged here in on the end to kind of get rid of it. So now when I play through this, you can see we're getting that zoom with all the layers there and it's looking pretty good. Now at this point, I would just go through and refine any of those masks or any of those layers just to kind of get the exact look that you want. But this is really where this effect is going to be made is at this point when you're just kind of messing around with the layers and really kind of making them blend more seamlessly. Another thing I did was I also added a bit of a wiggle so I created a new null object and I parented my camera to that null. Then I hit P on the keyboard and Alt click on this stopwatch and I created an expression of a wiggle 1.5 comma two. And what I did to this layer was I came up here and added a slider from the expression controls. And with that second number selected, what I did was I parented it to that slider. Now I have a slider that will affect that wiggle expression. So what I did was I just created a keyframe for my slider because I didn't want any wiggle here. Right in the middle of the transition, I wanted it to wiggle around. So I kind of gave it a little bit of a wiggle. And then at the end, I wanted it to go back to zero. I then right clicked on all of those keyframes. I made them easy ease just to help smooth out that animation. And then as I play through, you can see we have the finished product. So at this point, it's just a matter of going back through, readjusting anything and just spending the time. Now, if you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can also check out other videos just like this one over here on the side of screen. Thanks very much to Zyra for sponsoring this video. You can check them out via the link in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.